George strengthens every organization that he's ever been associated with. Uh, certainly the Russell Company, which uh, single-handedly he really built from nothing. From only an idea and a start that his grandfather left with him. And he built that so successfully and sold it in really in mid-career and turned his career to one of philanthropy and nonprofit organizations. The uh, watchwords for NBR is to strengthen and inform public policy. And George has been at the helm of that in a very meaningful way. His whole spirit is one of, of cooperation. Uh, so whether it's in the business world or again, the whole basic model of NBR, which I think you know, both George and Rich helped take an idea and drive it to fruition, is not to try to have a policy think tank with every expert, but to have a network. And you can't have a network uh, without effective cooperation and reach. And George, as chairman of NBR, certainly helped make that happen. The way George imparted wisdom, the way he got things through to people was to follow, keep it simple, stupid. And KISS became one of his mottos. And when you're on a board with George, you're reminded how he does that. And he imparts that to all organizations, not just NBR, but to all organizations. Keep it simple, keep it clear, and keep driving for measurable objectives. Everything that George touched materialized. So in our many conversations about uh, the Soviet Union, something that he was very interested in, or about China, which he was very interested in, um, I was always impressed that uh, George, as someone who was not expert on those places, always knew the details. Uh, he, he had a kind of uh, deep understanding a desire for deep knowledge and uh, that was more like being with academics that was one of the wonderful things about George the two words I would associate with George more than any other are energy and enthusiasm but I have to quickly add integrity so I guess that's three his energy and enthusiasm are infectious when he comes into a room it's like you have a whole dose of oxygen so it just gives sort of an infectious sense of energy and purpose. If I were to pick two things about George's ability to engage and motivate people, it'd be difficult to get down to two because there's so many, but I guess the two that really come to mind in a powerful way are optimism and humility. On the one hand, George is somebody who believes very deeply in the power of ideas to promote positive change. And yet he does it with complete absence of arrogance or a sense that he has all the answers. There is this sense of real humility against very big challenges. And these two things together are very, very rare and quite inspiring. The 2020 is just one element, kind of one little bit of the world George opened our eyes to and brought us into. There were people, uh, there were activities, there were particular issues. Um, that we would discuss on the board. George would take an interest or come up with the idea himself. He loved to have great people on the board. We attracted Bob Zellick, John Huntsman, uh, John Shalikashvili. And so these are, these are the kinds of people that came on and our world as a consequence just expanded exponentially. Dealing with somebody like George, you are able to say to yourself, well, is my idea a good idea? In other words, uh, I'm planning to do this in Southeast Asia. Well, George is planning to do this in Russia. Uh, he's, a, he's got these questions. I'm, I better have the same questions, so maybe I better go dig around. So uh, I think in strengthening a resolve and uh, in maintaining the integrity of, uh, of ideas, he certainly has influenced, I think, probably anybody around him. George conveys to everyone a sense of warmth, uh, uh, decency, uh, and, and integrity. And I think that is one of his most sterling attributes that 
Frankly, other people build on it. Any organization that he's with, uh, like NBR or I'm sure in the private sector, uh, can connect with that. But then in addition, you know, he's a person who is fascinated with ideas, uh, with other cultures, um, and I think he's always encouraged others to try to broaden their horizons. So you, if you combine the most basic human decency with somebody uh, that has uh, an intellect that's always searching and trying to understand more about others and conveys that to others, you couldn't ask for a better person uh, in terms of uh, an international organization like NBR. Because he's a man of so many talents and a man of wide scope in the things he does. One of the very few people uh, who has done extremely well in business, been very successful in business, and also extremely well in the philanthropic part of his life where he's headed and led so many f fine organizations, uh, NBR of course being among the very first ones and among the very most important to him. And then as the company started traveling around the world in the 2020, he realized in terms of a bigger vision that the human race had to resolve. And so he got active in the National Bureau of Asian Research. He got involved in the East-West Institute. He's working now on a project called One Nation. And uh, a lot of people, when they're talking about his of philanthropy and they say well you know how come you've moved from some of these local projects to these big projects and he said we're not going to have a local anything if we can't resolve this big issue this world will end in a final world war and so we just have to get up and get going on this project and that's what that's what he's done in great measure There's no question that my principal intersection with George has been the Pacific Health Summit, where he and his crew have developed this wonderful program, which is just successful off of the charts, and it's doing really marvelous things in gathering people from uh, poor countries together to talk about health reform, health advancement. We think of it as being a really, maybe spectacular is not too big a word for uh, uh, for a co for a contribution to the to the work in global health, was George funny? No, that said, he wasn't a funny person. I mean, he didn't try to try to be a funny person. Witty, funny, great to be around. Same sense of humor that I have. George is prone to have sneaky smiles. He doesn't just let them out too easily. But when he does, it's really great. It's very, it's very charming. There are some people who smile for the camera, never George. His smiles were always kind of, kind of that interior smile, the Mona Lisa of, of business. George does not have what I would call a conventional sense of humor. And it comes in at just the right moment when there's the need to diffuse something or attention or just an observation. It really is uncanny. Did I ever see my dad do something goofy? George is not goofy. I'm not sure that I've ever seen him be goofy. Then they really haven't been out on a boat with George because he does a lot of goofy things. Doing cannonballs off the flybridge, maybe. George, some people look at the uh, world we have today and curse the darkness. Others look at the same world and light a candle. You always light a candle. Your friends understand that and everyone who's observed you know that you have really made the world a better place. We're grateful. George, our lives are the richer for you just being here. Thanks very much. First of all, George, it's just 
What you've accomplished uh, is just uh, off of the charts, and uh, we all are indebted to you for your for your wonderful insights and your energy, the imagination which you've brought to uh, international relations, and of course, particularly the Pacific Health Summit. So that and the personal friendship is uh, the, 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 your uh, your warmth, your good nature, your good humor. I. Uh, you know, I think between your accomplishments and your personality, why uh, you're you're on, you're a major figure in this neck of the woods, and we're all indebted to you, George. It's been a pleasure to reflect on your great leadership and to tell you tonight, with my heartfelt gratitude, how many of us here have watched you over 15 years help create the great institution that NBR can claim. Your work, your compassion, your wisdom, and frankly, your pushing has taken this institution a long way. And those of us here are here to tell you how proud we are and how pleased we are to honor you tonight. Congratulations, my friend. So, Dad, I'm sure you're really comfortable right about now. After all of these comments and observations about you have been made and shared broadly, and they're just scratching the surface of the remarkable accomplishments throughout a long career of being generous, kind, bringing every resource you have to bear on making a difference. You talk about have making the world safer for your grandchildren, and I think you've made a very real, a very real contribution to doing just that. And your that generous heart that is so big and so willing to just throw yourself at a problem, no matter how big or impossible it might seem is something that inspires others and rallies people to join you in whatever that might be. So on behalf of the family, thank you so much for everything that you've done for NBR and for a host of other organizations that you've had a dramatic uh, influence on, a dramatic impact on. You've touched so many people, Dad, and uh, it motivates and inspires many, including me and my siblings and all of your 11 grandchildren. So, we love you, we're proud of you, and we're so thankful that there's an effort being made to really honor who you are and what you have brought to so many.